If you are in the market for a new job, you've been shopping around, you've been applying, you know that this market has been nuts. Whether you're a fresh college graduate or you're somebody who's been in the workforce a long time, it's really important that you be competitive in today's job market. So here's some tips to help you stand out in front of a potential employer. The first thing that you absolutely wanna do is optimize your digital footprint. Now, what does that mean? The easiest way to get a job in today's competitive market is to have the employer come to you. Now, I know that sounds like a fairy tale, maybe a dream to you to have somebody come call you, but it's one of those things where if you can make your digital footprint look a little bit more professional, a little bit more what an employer might be looking for, they will reach out to you, whether it's a LinkedIn search, whether it's an Indeed kind of job report, whatever. So what digital footprints are we talking about? We're talking about your website portfolio, maybe your LinkedIn profile, your Indeed and your digital resume, wherever that might be. When we're talking about optimizations, we want to make sure that not only is your profile visible to those people, but it also has the baked in keywords or the baked in information that an employer might be searching for. So if you're applying for a director level role, you might want to have a description in your profile profile or in your resume that says seeking a director level role. So what action items are actually included as part of optimizations? First, you wanna conduct a thorough review of your profiles. Does it have all of your most recent information? Does it have your certification information? Does it have your school information? What other job description or job related tasks do would someone be searching for? Not only your LinkedIn, your social media profiles, but also wherever your resume might be located as well. And second, once you've reviewed and updated all of your information, you wanna make sure that you're actually creating new content as well, whether that be a blog or a website or a por digital portfolio that you're able to put all of your information on. So when an employer actually asks for your information, you can give them, you can send them a link to your website, you can send them a link to your portfolio, but you already have all that information gathered and ready to share upon request. The second thing is you wanna leverage the power of networking. I know that's the most common interview thing is when, it is when a YouTuber talks about networking and they say, go to network, talk to your people, get a different job. But there are a lot of avenues when it comes to networking that you might not already be doing. And when we're talking about networking, we're talking about making genuine, authentic connections. We're not just talking about going to a networking event and collecting business cards. Want to network with, you know, three or four specific people who you think can benefit your career, but also that you want to genuinely and authentically build a relationship with. So what are some action items? Depending on how desperate you are to get a job, the first thing that you want to do is you want to attend industry events. Industry events and networking at industry events are perfect because nobody knows each other. On the most part, most people don't know each other. If you go to an industry event, people are looking to meet other people that are fun, that are engaging, that like to be social, you'll be able to find dozens of them ready to meet new people just like you. The second thing that you can do is you can actually connect with people digitally if there's somebody that you're interested in networking with or if there's someone that you're interested in talking with, you can connect with them on LinkedIn and say, hey, I stumbled upon your profile. I thought that your experience was really great. Do you mind if I chat with you? Or if there's somebody at a company that you're looking to move into, you can always connect with them on LinkedIn and say, hey, I've applied for this role and I'm interested to hear your experience, what's going on. Um, if this is a role that you potentially would be able to refer me to, all of those things are super helpful when it comes to digitally connecting and networking with people. You can be very selective that way. The third thing that a lot of people don't do when they're job hunting is showcasing your expertise and experience. A lot of times people go in to apply for a role and they say, my resume is enough, my information is enough to, to move the needle and get people interested in my experience. But what's even better than telling people about your experience is actually showing them your experience. So if there's a creative way that you're able to showcase your expertise, let's say as a graphic designer, is your resume graphically pleasing, just as an example? Or if you're a salesperson, can you demonstrate your sales numbers inside of your resume or something like that. So what are some action items that would fall under this category? First, you could start a blog, you could start a website, it's free and it really doesn't cost that much to do. If you can summarize your information and showcase your expertise and your skill set and use that content on your social media profiles like LinkedIn, the more that you post and the more that you contribute to building an audience or building a profile, people are gonna say, oh, this person knows what they're talking about. So if you are an HR person, talking about latest trends in HR, in job satisfaction, in academic research, in relation to human resources, the more that you can talk about that and showcase your opinion, your perspective on it, the more that you're gonna be able to position yourself for a potential role at a larger organization. And the second thing that you can do in this category is get certified in the platforms or programs that you are experienced in it. So when you apply to a company that requires that skill set, you can say, I'm already certified in that. Or if there's a system or a platform or a, or a program 
that some companies require, let's say you're a coder and you need to understand Python or you need to understand a certain coding language, getting certified in that specific coding language will help you when you apply to that job and say, I know how to do this. I'm recognized by other organizations who offer certifications in this. And you can use that as leverage to say, I know what I'm doing and I can show it to you here are the credentials that I have. The fourth thing that you can do is you can embrace continuous learning. The world is changing very fast these days with AI, automations, different tools that are coming in to replace roles. The world is moving very fast. And if you can demonstrate to your employer that not only do you know the skill sets that are fundamental to the job, but you understand how things have changed and how you can adapt within that role, it's really a good showcase to you to say, this is how I'm adapting to the market. Here's how I'm adapting to the future of this industry. Different action steps that you can take in this category. The first thing that you can do is find out what are the hot button issues or what are the trending topics in your industry and figure out how to position those within your resume, within your role, your current role. And by using those tools or understanding those tools and applying them into your resume, you become ahead of the curve when it comes to applying for roles in the future. The second thing that you can do is you can set aside time each week for professional development. Now, this isn't something necessarily that you need to do for a job, but it's something that you want to do to enrich yourself to say, what am I interested in learning? What do I actually want to do? And then when you go to apply for in the future, you can say, oh, I, I have experience in this new trend or this new automation platform or whatever you are researching, but you can actually apply it to the future roles that you're applying for. And the fifth thing that you can do in a competitive job market to stand out is change your approach or focus. If you've been applying to a lot of different roles over a period of time, let's say you've applied to 200 jobs in the past three months and you haven't heard anything or more, it's time to change your approach. Something about your application isn't working, whether it's your resume, whether it's your salary requirements, whether it's the position that you're applying for, maybe it's the location you're applying for, maybe it's the type of organizations you're looking at, but you need to change your focus or your attention to something else or change something about your application to make you stand out more or to make you more competitive in a market that you maybe haven't applied for already. The first thing that you wanna do is you wanna review your resume and make sure that everything is coming across cleanly. If it's something that maybe the automation systems on the back end, the actual AI who are reading and scoring your resume, maybe they're just not catching the right keywords or the right education because of the way that your resume is formatted. The second thing is you can start attending more career fairs or in-person events to start networking directly with the recruiters. The third thing that you can do is you can tap into your alumni network, especially if you went to a really large school. Um, a lot of state schools specifically have alumni networks, alumni programs that you can actually reach out to those teams, the actual alumni teams and say, hey, I'd like to network with other employees or other um, alumni of the school who have this type of resume, who have this type of skill set, who maybe have this job title, work at this company, and they'll be able to connect you with those people individually. So once you apply all of these tips, you might find that you get into an interview and you're not really sure how to impress a recruiter. So check out this video that I made about how to impress a recruiter when you get that interview. And until then, I'll see you on the next one.